I just did one of the most dangerous things you can do in Jacksonville. I rode my bike to this event. The city of Jacksonville has been ranked the fourth worst city in the United States for pedestrian and bicycle fatalities per capita, according to Smart Growth America's Dangerous by Design report. As a traffic engineer, I took a deeper dive into that issue, and the problem is much worse than that. The map you see behind me is pedestrian and bicycle crashes that have occurred in the last 10 years. That's 7,269 and counting. Most of these crashes result in some type of injury. Many of them result in significant injury and even death. What I'm here to tell you today is that a lot of what has to do with this problem has to do with our values. And that what we need to decide moving forward is that people matter more than cars. To further illustrate, I'm going to talk about two tragic events that have occurred. The first one only happened less than two months ago. A bicyclist was on his way to work, riding along, when he swayed into traffic. He was struck and critically injured. Where was he supposed to ride? This is that location. This is the traffic kind of condition that was going on at the time. There's no extra space for that bicyclist to be. The second event happened this summer. Miss Angie Zanders, age 68, was on her way home from work, and she stopped on Mayport Road at the Mayport Plaza. Stopped to do some shopping. There's no crosswalk at that location. When you step out, she looked to the right, looked to the left, and the safe place to cross is a quarter mile in each direction. So for her to make the safe journey, a quarter mile is about a 10-minute walk. Stop, wait for the light, cross, and then a 10-minute walk back to where she really wanted to be. Mayport Road is a six-lane road with a real narrow median, so there's six lanes to cross. This day, she's very tired. She looked it up either way and made a choice to cross at that location. She got through the first lane, the second lane, and then by the third lane, she didn't make it. These events are happening very frequently in our city, over 7,000 crashes with this potential. Why? Our values and I'm going to demonstrate examples of how our values of how we've placed to build our space has contributed to this problem. We need to decide that people matter more than cars. So one thing we know is we have a problem. How did we get here? It really goes back to post-World War II. The automobile came along. The promise of this American dream the freedom that it afforded us, the suburban lifestyle, it was great. Freedom of movement, independence, all that, it was wonderful. So we started setting about building our cities around that system. In Florida, it came a little bit later than post-World War II because we needed this. How many of us would really be living here if we didn't have that? By 1960, 80% of all the cars in Florida had air conditioning. Our houses were air conditioned, our buildings were air conditioned, our cars were air conditioned. We had this lifestyle of independence and freedom and mobility, and so we never had to get out and walk around. So, our economy and our highway departments got really good at giving us that. Designing roads, our highway department set about giving us a first-class highway system for cars. I relate to this really well because as a civil engineer, I was trained to give you that, okay? It's 
It's really hard. You think you might have more cars, add some more lanes. If you uh, really want to make sure that people can go fast and continue on their trip, provide no interruption to that facility. No crosswalks, no lights, almost like a freeway. So we have valued that lifestyle for a very long time until we kind of reach this tipping point where we have this crisis of crashes and, and fatalities. So it's not just about the roads. We need to design our communities a little bit differently as well. So there is kind of that land component that we have to make in concert. Going to take a little bit of a, a segue and talk about an, a, a parallel example of how we value and our values kind of relate. 20 years ago, about young traffic engineer in Minnesota, working for the city of Arden Hills, and they had a uh, new uh, land development happening, and they were going to put a road through a parkland. And this city council was very concerned about the animal species that were in that park. So they wanted to make sure that we took care of all the animals, and I learned all about Florida well before I moved here that we are great in this state at taking care of animals. Environmentalists have figured out and understood that we need to consolidate all of the lands and the habitat so that the animals have a place that naturally takes them to a place where they're going to cross a road. And then we spend a lot of money uh, building a lot of crossings like this panther crossing. We value the panther as we should. There's only 200 of them left in the state. And they are precious to us, and so we take care of them. We take care of the bear. We take care of snakes. We take care of turtles. And we even take care of the little bitty Perdillo Key beach mouse. Okay? Just learned this a couple weeks ago. We actually put PVC pipes underneath the road to make sure that they can get across. Another example of how we show our values and this is a, uh, something that really hit me in the last two years. Uh, I was working for the Jacksonville Transportation Authority on providing safe streets around the bus stops. It was a big program called Complete Streets. And as we were going out and doing community meetings and talking to people, I was paying a little bit more direct attention to what was going on in the media. And what I saw it was an article that looked like this, and this has been repeated you know, periodically. But the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, they've seen the same media report about us being one of the worst cities in the country. So they're doing their part to try and fix the problem. And, and the Sheriff's Office duty and role is to enforce. So they set about enforcing jaywalking. But ironically, at the same time, I came across this article that the city of St. Paul, they were addressing pedestrian safety issues, and they were out there enforcing vehicles that were not yielding to pedestrians in the crosswalk, and that was their campaign. So they said that walking is important, and they valued that. Perhaps it would be good if JSO had more crosswalks to enforce. We're working on this problem. It's simple. There's kind of four main areas. One, we start with the width of our road for automobiles. While there's some roads that will need and continue to have to carry a lot of cars, we have many streets in the city of Jacksonville that no longer need that number of lanes. Reduce them. The other thing we can do is minimize the width of these lanes to make the crosswalks a shorter distance and easier to travel. So you don't have to be a track star to make it across. We also need to modernize our bike system. Actually have one is a start. But what's really transformed in our design community, and it's global, it's not just the United States, but we're seeing more examples that it's necessary to provide kind of protected bike lanes, not just that three-foot strip of pavement that you're not sure if it's a shoulder or a place you should be riding your bike. My 
five-year-old daughter should be able to ride her bike on that, on that trail, on that system, on that road. And then finally, we cannot ignore kind of the land use around there because it's not just a road problem. It's a value problem, but it's also how we create the space. The Mayport Plaza strip mall kind of not connected to anything, not really promoting walkability. The things I need to educate you on is about my industry. We try and make things easier for everyone to intuitively understand what we mean. And I'm often reminded by my family and friends that they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so my education to you is we in our industry are always seeking public consent, input, and, and interest. So what you need to do for us to really help move this along is look for a complete street project advertisement, lane elimination study, a road diet project, a context sensitive design, or even a streetscape project. All these projects kind of, we coined these different terms, but they all kind of mean the same thing. We're out there trying to reinvent the space for better walkability and, and bike, bike ability and safety. But don't ignore, and you should really, the big red flag to put out there is if you see a capacity project. The red flag on that is the capacity may be needed. You know, the additional capacity may be needed. But the way we're designing our space now is we are not doing capacity at the exclusion of people walking and biking. So those first four that I mentioned, you should be really active and supportive behind. And then the capacity type projects, you should be a little bit skeptical and ready to go after it, if need be. This is a political will problem that we, we face. The agencies are really making an effort. City of Jacksonville just recently adopted what I think is a modern and very good bicycle and pedestrian master plan. The Jacksonville Transportation Authority has just made complete streets their number one priority to make sure that they're taking care of their pedestrian and their transit customers. The Florida Department of Transportation took great notice because the state of Florida is far and away the worst state in the country in this area. And so their way of dressing it is a policy change and a complete rewrite of all the sacred scrolls of design manuals and all, all that. So they have become a complete streets agency. These are all great plans and great ideas, but they're not going to happen unless we here get behind that and make it happen. So finally, we the people of Jacksonville, people matter more than cars. Thank you.